Welcome back. <clears throat> this time we're looking at a program to read a binary structure from a file back into a structure within your C program. So I've now created a file called catread.c. <clears throat> Remember the catmain.c we looked at in the previous video actually created and wrote out a file called cats.dat which had in it, uh, in my case, one cat. In your case it would have uh, five uh, different structs. And we even looked a little bit in the terminal to make sure that file sort of made sense or at least to understand why it looks so weird. I basically copy and, and pasted catmain.c, which is the right program, into another tab and made catread.c. All I really had to change was uh, an fread to an fwrite and a couple of other details. Let's walk through this program and see how it works. First of all, notice that on line 6 I'm still using cat, I'm hash including cat.h. That's important. That ensures that the definition, the structure definition I use to read the cats back in exactly matches the structure definition I used to write the cats out. By reusing the cat.h file, hash including it in both catmain.c and catread.c, I ensure that that will happen. I also initialized on line 11, I used a C shorthand. Remember, C has all kinds of shorthands and shortcuts for power users. I initialized Fluffy to be no name, no color, and a weight of zero. That's just so we can make sure that when we read Fluffy in from the file, we're really reading the right data and not just something that was somehow left in memory. So what happens in the braces is that those values, double quote, no, a string of nothing, followed by a string of nothing, followed by 0.0, .0 go into um, cat uh, fluffy.name, fluffy.color, and fluffy.weight, respectively. I could do it all with separate assignment statements and stereo copies. This is just an easier shortcut. On line 14, I again F open the file, and the only difference is, this time instead of opening for WB, write binary, I open for RB, read binary. I perform the same check that the file opened OK, and files sometimes do fail to open on read because if you spell the name wrong or you change a character or you move the file, then you may not, your read program may not find the file where your write program created it. That does happen, we just quit at that point, and it's up to you to figure out what happened. This is particularly a problem if you're using Xcode. Xcode has a way of writing these files out to strange places where they're difficult to find even using Apple's Finder app. So if you are running on Xcode, uh, the advice is you basically need to give a full path here to the, uh, to the file, and I'll show you what that looks like, then I'll undo it. On a Mac, it looks like, and I'm uh, user Jerry on my machine, and I'll put it in downloads. So I would tell on my Xcode on my Mac to write the cats.dat file in the downloads folder of my Mac. On uh, Linux and on PCs, you don't need to do that, and you'll probably find the cats.dat file in the project folder. Just a note. Okay, so we open the file for read, and we make sure it actually opened. I changed the number cats read, the in cats, in cats written, to be in cats read, because now we're reading them in. I started off with zero, and sure enough, just like F write tells you how many structs it wrote, F read tells you how many structs it read. And other than that, F read and F write are almost mirror images. I was able to change F write to F read here, and the arguments are the same. This is now the place to put the bytes that are read. So take all the bytes you read from the file and put them into Fluffy. How big is Fluffy? How many bytes? Whatever size of says. How many structs? Just one at a time. Where do I get them from? FP, which is the file I opened right up here. Cats.dat. Then I just print out the number of cats read. If it's zero, something bad happened. If it's one, I succeed in reading the one and only cat I have in my file. To be sure the data makes sense, I now print out, print F, uh, to the terminal, the name of the cat, the color of the cat, and the weight of the cat. And that's exactly what this printf does, and of course I F close the file just for tidiness. So if we now compile and run this file, we'll be able to see um, that we do successfully read the cats.dat file. 
for instance, I'm going to drag this window over here. This is a terminal window. <clears throat> and in here, I'm going to, I already have the cats.dat file from before, from when I ran my uh, cat main.c. This a dot out down here is what I get when I compile cat read.c. So uh, if you want to see that, compile it. I got a brand new a dot out file, which is this stupid name that Linux calls executable files if you don't give them a better name. I'm going to run it again. One cat's red, that's right, and sure enough, the name is Fluffy, the color is the loot calico, and the weight is 7.1. So it opened the cats.dat file and read the bytes back into the struct, and when they lined up in all the members of the struct, then printing them out works correctly. So even though the file, as you saw in a previous video, looks weird if you just look at it with a text editor, as long as you use the same struct to read it as you did to write it, everything's going to work fine. You should be able to do these things in your project using your struct. Um, you could put the read and write in the same file. I recommend that you put them in separate files. It's just easier to keep track of what you're doing um, and go from there. And of course, uh, you know, post with uh, any questions that you have.